Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the June 2021 edition of the Maine GIS Users Group Virtual Lunch and Learn. Um, our topic today is the Sewell Company Aerial Photographs Collection uh, from the UMaine Special Collections. Um, I'm Patrick Cunningham. I'm one of your moderators today, along with Judy Colby George. Our guest speaker is Paul Smitherin from the Fogler, Fogler Library at the University of Maine. Uh, we'll be giving him an introduction in a little bit, but we should have a nice, interesting uh, brown bag lunch and learn topic for you today on the, the uh, aerial collection from Sewell Company. Looking forward to it. As you may be aware, the Maine GIS User Group is a nonprofit all voluntary organization uh, in Maine, promoting the education and uh, sharing of GIS information um, throughout Maine. Uh, we do this through a website, through uh, various uh, meetings and conferences in normal times that are in person throughout the state, um, presentations and, and those type of things. Uh, of course, over the past year and a half, that's all been uh, virtual due to the pandemic. Um, and, um, but we're looking forward to getting back to the time where we can all meet uh, face to face um, to continue uh, networking and, and learning from each other as we always do at our various conferences. Um, we appreciate the support of everyone uh, at Main G uh, that sponsors uh, Main GIS User Group and that volunteers their time. Um, we have our gold sponsors here, uh, Quantum, Blue Marble, and Esri. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Sewell Company as well for joining up again uh, just recently. And um, we would like to encourage you to get involved. Um, you know, certainly attend our events when we have them. Um, present if you would like. Um, become a member, renew your membership, which is going to be going out or has just gone out uh, this month, actually. Um, have your company or organization become a sponsor, but you also individually could serve on a committee or a working group or, or even run for the board. Uh, we have our elections in the fall, so watch for more information on that. And some of the committees and working groups that we have uh, include course education, um, membership, program, publicity, sponsorship, finance, bylaws and policies, all kinds of things like that that you'd have for running a, a nonprofit. It's, there's always lots to do. Um, and we're always looking for help. So even if you um, have never helped before, we, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at meetupboard at gmail.com. And just a little more information on who we are. Our chair this year is Andy Smith-Peterson uh, and our vice chair is Judy Colby George. And as you can see, we have a variety of uh, companies and organizations represented here um, across the state. Um, so uh, there's lots to learn and lots to share. Uh, and just uh, a note, uh, our virtual lunch and learn events, we're gonna take the summer off. We'll be taking July and August off. Um, so um, that'll be uh, a little bit of a break, but it'll give you all time to come up with a great talk for our next one, which hopefully will be in September. Uh, so as you're uh, thinking about that, shoot us an email. We would love to have you present. Uh, and who knows, I was just saying to Judy, maybe we'll be back in person sometime late in the fall. We don't know, we don't have anything definite set up, but um, watch for, for that, of course. And if you want to bone up on uh, some of these lunch and learns, they're all on our YouTube video. Um, so there's plenty to watch and learn there. Uh, we do record all, all these. And we also have a social media presence, so please do follow us on all the appropriate social media vehicles to stay current. I'm going to hand it over to Judy to introduce our guest speaker. Judy? Thanks, Patrick. Um, just want to thank uh, Paul Smitherman for being willing to come and help us out. And also uh, to, again, uh, thank Sewell Company 
uh, whose photos we're going to be talking about for becoming a gold uh, sponsor of uh, the uh, main GIS users group. It is very helpful to us when companies step up like that. Um, so I'm going to introduce Paul. He's a library specialist um, where he's the technical advisor in the special collections department. And he is uh, creating solutions for all of the challenges that were faced with large, uh, large um, photography uh, libraries and the digital world that we live in now. And um, Sewell donated uh, over 3,000 rolls of film and a million aerial images uh, to the library. And I know for myself <laughs> that I can get completely lost in those. I could never have this job because I'd never get anything done. Because mm -hmm. I start looking at those photos and I see so many interesting things in those old photos that I just, I would get stuck. And so I'm really appreciative that he's here and looking forward to hear what he has to say. And I'm going to just turn it over to Paul now. Yes, thanks, uh, <clears throat> uh, Judy and Pat, for uh, and everybody at the main uh, GIS users group for ha having me here today. Um, trying to get my screen to go. There we go, Full screen. Um, so it's real, uh, it's an honor, and a pleasure to be here, speaking to you all, uh, the main GIS users group. Um, and um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the Sewell Company aerial photographs uh, that we received at uh, the UMaine Fogler Library. Um, this is a very uh, nascent, I would say a nascent project at this point. It's been working on it less than two years, but I'll, I'll share a little, little bit with you about it and uh, where we're out and uh, maybe show you a couple interesting photos uh, along the way. Uh, this photo here is uh, Bangor, July, 1965. This is, a, uh, I, Put quite a few of these, about 1,200 of them, as Judy said, uh, up online uh, at this point on the digital commons. And uh, this is actually one of the most popular downloads, uh, is this photo of Bangor. Uh, so it's a lot of interesting stuff, and I'll show you some more. Uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, I have a BA in physics and a master's in spatial uh, from the University of Maine. Um, I worked uh, for quite a while uh, in my graduate work on at the intersection sort of between physics and uh, GIS. And uh, I worked on a large study, among other things, I worked on a large study of uh, uranium and radon in, uh, in uh, groundwater in the Augusta area. And uh, we built some models around this. Here you can see uh, the granite formations in the, uh, the Augusta area and uh, the uranium and the radon um, um, mapping we did. I did a, quite a bit of, spatial analysis back in the day. I never, uh, I'm brand new to the field of uh, aerial photography and uh, and photogrammetry and image analysis and all that. So I'm getting up to speed on that end of GIS. Um, right now I work at uh, Fogler Library. I've been there since 2014. Uh, I moved up to Special Collections in 2018. And uh, here's a nice picture of Fogler. Uh, April 1950, you can see just below center is the library uh, looking north along the mall towards the uh, field house. And uh, this is, if you know the uh, library, this is before the, the wing was added on to the south side of the library in 1972. So uh, just a lot of interesting stuff you can find in the collection. Um, not all of it's online right now, but uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Um, so I'm not a librarian, you know, I'm not an archivist. Um, so some of the things I do at, uh, in special collections is I handle all kinds of these uh, fun uh, analog media types. Um, and uh, I manage uh, several uh, <clears throat> large collections on the digital commons that you made. Uh, one, of, one of our most popular ones is the main campus archives. Um, and if you haven't looked at this, if you're interested in the history of uh, the uh, Orno Old Town area or uh, University of Maine in general. Uh, this is a great resource. There's uh, about 5,200 issues of the main campus up online right now. And they go back to 1887 up through um, I think 2018 at this point. And uh, they're just a lot of fun. And I do some coding too. I do some uh, Python, uh, mostly just to uh, harvest metadata and make reports. Um, so that's what I do. 
Um, here's one of the collections uh, that we're talking about today. Basically, one of the big ones is the Sewell Company photos. Um, that's on Digital Commons. There's about 1,200 of them up there at this point. Um, uh, if you look at uh, this breadcrumb, the previous breadcrumb, uh, just the Sewell aerial, it's, uh, there's, a link, there's a list of links by county. Um, so if you want to look up by county, um, that's possible. And we have some few things out of the state too. Um, there's some, uh, actually some photographs from uh, South Vietnam, 1966. There's some of Boston, which was a survey for the big dig in 1992. And, uh, so just have fun exploring that. Like Judy said, it's just uh, loads of fun. Uh, so a little bit about the Sewell Company. Um, there's probably people in uh, the audience today that know more about Sewell Company than I do. Uh, just kind of came on board with this whole project about two years ago. Uh, but what I do know is founded in 1880 and they began offering uh, aerial photography services in the 40s. Um, they were sold to Treadwell Franklin Infrastructure in uh, 2018. And here you can see is a very early uh, 1946 image um, somewhere in Franklin or Somerset County. I uh, kind of lost, lost a little track of this. You see CMP, you can see it's for central main power on the uh, upper right hand corner there. Um, so uh, after the sale, uh, the company decided it couldn't maintain the, uh, the film, the paper files and the maps and everything associated with the actual analog photography. And, uh, so they, uh, we, the Fogler Library received all that, the film rolls, the files, and the maps in October of 2019. Um, this is a picture of the film roll storage at Sewell. This was in the basement of Sewell. Our marketing person, Brad Beauregard, took this very nice photo that uh, sort of captured what the storage looked like um, prior to us uh, receiving the collection. Um, it's about 3,000 rolls of film uh, and uh, about a million photographs. And so the dates range from about 1946 to 2015. We actually did have a little bit of some earlier things in uh, our collection already. We have a, a large set of large uh, agricultural photos from uh, the 30s of Roosted County that were uh, doing farm surveys. Um, but uh, you know, the main part of it is the is the, the materials we received in 2019. Um, Paul, one question we have is, did you also receive the high resolution film scanners as well to scan the film? Um, yes, we did. Yeah. And I'll, uh, I'll show you those in a, in a minute here, tell you what's going on with that. Cool. Um, so here's where the, the collection lives here now in our uh, Offsite storage facility, so climate controlled. Um, you can see here's uh, the film rolls that are just uh, happily living in our uh, our storage site. Um, so it took a couple days to get them all over there, but uh, they all arrived safely, and so they're in a safe place now, which is uh, it's good. Just that they're all there, and uh, we're slowly working on uh, processing them and and really figuring out what our overall long-term strategy is for these. Um, uh, and this, uh, as Pat was saying, these are the, uh, the original VX4000 scanners that came over from Sewell. Um, uh, these are basically circa uh, about 1995, uh, mid-90s technology, very well built, uh, very amazing machines, uh, but the technology itself is, is somewhat dated at this point. Um, but we did receive from Sewell about four terabytes of, of uh, imagery. Uh, it's about 3% of the entire collection that was digitized at Sewell on the VX4000 scanners. Um, and so those are those were scanned on average at about 20 microns uh, or 1200 DPI. Uh, uh, but some of them are uh, finer resolution. I think it went down to even maybe five or seven microns. Uh, but uh, okay, was, when, what we're doing now is <clears throat> we received three of these scanners, and um, but uh, we, none of them are functional at this point. 
Um, two of them were down, and then the third one that was allegedly functional when it came over, I, I couldn't get it to work. Um, the, the software is old. One, one problem we had is that the software was running on Windows XP. The, the disk image for the computer was an XP image, and the library policy uh, wouldn't allow us to run XP on the library network. Um, so that was another problem besides like not getting the camera to work. Uh, so sort of a temporary uh, interim solution. It's sort of like generating thumbnails of the images. They're, they're very good for historical purposes, but they're not definitely not like uh, photogrammetry quality uh, images, but it is uh, uh, pretty serviceable for just uh, taking a look and seeing uh, historical things. Um, so this, I took the, uh, the actual backplane and the film roll assemblies and uh, I replaced the fluorescent bulbs with uh, LEDs in this case. And I'm just using a, a real generic 24 megapixel Canon DSLR uh, to take the images of these. So it winds up being 300 DPI. Uh, and um, it works, I mean, it works good for what it is, but so it's not, it's not super high resolution scanning, uh, but it is the, uh, the no money solution, the no cost solution at this point. This camera is actually one of the cameras that we normally check out to the students uh, for like digital photography classes and so forth. Um, I'll show you like the product of that. It's just one of the products uh, from that um, that I uh, did not too long ago. Um, as you can see, it works. What I'm doing at uh, 300 DPI works really well if the original scale of the photo is say uh, uh, large scale like this the original scale of this particular photo was about uh, one inch to 800 feet and uh, i zoomed in on it uh, just so you could see a little more of the building detail um, but this works for, a lot of people are just interested in uh, historical information like was a building there or wasn't there or, you know was this road there or wasn't it there? Um, something like that. not doing photogrammetry but uh, it's pretty suitable for uh, uh, just historical applications and general interest. Um, and let's see. So as far as long-term in terms of digitizing, uh, we've been in discussions with uh, contractors seeking business stuff. Uh, we want to digitize a, a substantial portion of the collection, primarily the oldest uh, photographs we can rescue. The oldest film needs to be uh, preserved by digital preservation. Um, and uh, there's a number of different film chemistries uh, through through the uh, collection. And uh, we are just trying to uh, make sure we get enough, uh, get the oldest ones digitized, uh, you know, like up until through the 70s, probably as, uh, as uh, Landsat and things came online in the 80s, um, there's more energy. So, and the uh, pandemic kind of set us back on this. Uh, basically everything, all budgets and everything was frozen. It was basically nothing happening. So, uh, but we're back in the process of uh, continuing this discussion with, uh, with some contractors to get this stuff digitized and get it up online. And uh, then make it more search searchable also in, uh, in spatial context, uh, allow a true spatial database on this stuff. So uh, as far as the way we do requests now, um, <clears throat> we're, we don't, we're pretty, pretty well short staffed and this isn't, isn't the only collection that I work on. So generally I ask people to give me a single location with some pretty specific information, either KML file or you know, a screenshot of Google map or something of that nature. And uh, usually I can do I'll do one image, uh, one to five either. So this, the, the location plus one on either side or two on either side, um, just to give a feel for what's there. Generally I can get these out in about a week. Uh, it's, it's a little slower sometimes when we're short staffed, but uh, I generally get them out in a week. This here is the, uh, it's an interesting one. It's the Holton Airport, 1965. But why this is interesting, if you look uh, at the, uh, the enlargement here, um, so what is uh, believed to be then the, in the right of the enlargement is the uh, the remains of the uh, the, P the POW camps uh, from 
uh, World War II where they were um, housing German POWs at the uh, Holton Airport and other locations that we've also, I think on the, the uh, right-hand side of this, you can see the remains of the, the foundations of the prisoner barracks there. So lots of uh, really interesting um, historical applications. And we've had a lot of requests um, for just different, like is that building there or not? in 1950 or 55. And then like Judy said, I'd, I'd never get tired of looking at this stuff. It's just, uh, it's just fascinating. So uh, anyways, please send me an email. If you have, uh, we're definitely would like ideas for how people would use the imagery um, in terms of uh, adding those ideas to our uh, funding requests. And of course, if you have requests, send it to me. Uh, questions, comments. Um, this is a, uh, I did this mosaic on the right here, my Chias Bay, 1966. It was a, um, um, for actually the humane Machias. Um, they were um, one of the ap interesting applications for this stuff is coastal erosion. Uh, so I put together this mosaic, 1966 over here on the right. Um, you can see this is Cutler uh, Naval Air Station, the, uh, the low frequency uh, communication array there at Cutler. And uh, so anyways, yeah, please uh, feel free to contact me uh, anytime. Um, thanks. I want to say there's a, as far as interesting things in the images, there's a lot of things that nobody ever expected might be interesting. But one of the things that I, my sort of pet projects is uh, collections of sky and water images. So this is Louds Island uh, near Friendship, Maine. And it's just a beautiful picture of the sky. <laughs> so uh, thanks for having me. And I'll, uh, I'm here for your questions. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, do we have any uh, questions for Paul? Um, one thing I was wondering was the interface that you have for searching the photos. I think that's what you showed early on. Is that something that you wrote or is that based on uh, other software? Oh, uh, let's see. Right there. Yeah. This here? No, that's on our, I'm sorry, that's on our uh, digital commons. Uh, actually, okay. I can show you out of this. Let's see if I can. Okay. Um, that should be, can you see the Fogler's, Fogler uh, website here? Okay. Yeah. So if you're at the Fogler web, website, you can go, uh, to the digital commons. And there's a number of different ways to get there. Um, and it's in our photographs. You can see there's a Sewell Aerial and then there's the Vietnam series. It's a separate series by itself. Um, but this is all just a, a standard uh, digital commons, which we have a subscription to it. So basically our cloud. Of, oh, okay. It's our cloud uh, uh, service that we use to present all kinds of stuff to the public. Um, you can see here we have some flight maps. I'm working on this stuff as, as I can, sort of catch as catch can. Uh, I wrote a little article about um, three different small applications just to kind of get people interested in. Um, uh, our archivist, Desiree, found this really interesting uh, booklets by the James Sewell Company uh, about applied forestry. Where they were, this, this is all the way back to 1911, 1912. Uh, anyway, so this is basically how, how you get there. Actually, if you, if you just go to Google and type Sewell Aerial, I think mm -hmm. this one is probably the first one that comes up. Um, so it's a lot of different interesting stuff. Uh, let's see, Kennebec, is everybody? Some people are in Kennebec County. Mm -hmm. um, some Augusta, Augusta ones. So another a question we have is China. the material, material you received from Sewell. Anyways, Bill. so that's kind of, that's Paul? what I do. Um, Paul, I had to kind of stop putting stuff up at this point. Uh, well, we're yeah, kind of overrun a little bit with the pandemic there. Uh, but. Once we get the stuff digitized, I think we'll have a different uh, we'll have a different uh, system to access the stuff with. Um, that would be more spatially enabled and uh, 
you know, be searchable by, you know, lat long town name, things like that. Oh, that's what we're doing now, anyway. This is, this is what I managed to get up before, uh, before I kind of had to stop for a while. Um, one question we had is did the material that you received from school include the project related flight line maps or the various photographic projects they flew or just the film scanners and photographs? So, flight um, line index maps are great resources to find which exposures you'd be looking for as an example. Yes, we do have the flight, we did receive the flight maps and uh, the folders that were associated with the with each uh, aerial survey job. Normally, the folders don't have uh, too much useful information. It's some of it, some of them do, but a lot of it is just the the invoice and uh, some of there's like official correspondence and stuff. But they do have the flight maps, and we also received uh, some large uh, cabinets with uh, larger uh, map drawers in them that uh, have the flight maps. Um, when I go looking for them, I uh, uh, sometimes I can't find the flight map. Uh, it's just uh, kind of the way it is, um, and at that points it's sort of like a, kind of a brute force visual search sometimes. But yes, the flight maps make it much easier to find things. We didn't receive uh, any of the actual products. Like uh, I've had a couple people ask me for say something like a uh, parcel maps or uh, survey maps that were generated by Sewell. And we did not receive any of that stuff. It was a lot of stuff like that. Uh, just products that they had generated for people, maps. Uh, you know, uh, what, about, uh, uh, what about camera calibration information? Just we do, we do have the, cam we do have, uh, the calibration reports. Uh, we received those uh, digitally, um, along with the, the other digital material. We received a portion of the aerial survey folders that were digitized. A large number of uh, camera calibration reports and um, a little bit of other supporting information, but it was, but we do have the calibration reports. Uh, so those are useful. I, uh, I'm not, you know, I mean, I took one photogrammetry class last year, so I'm trying to learn about it, but I am actually not up to speed on uh, using ArcGIS to do things like, uh, uh, you know, aero triangulation, bundle adjustments, and things of that nature. Um, so but, that, that camera calibration information, will that be affiliated with the digital file or how will somebody find it? I'm not sure. Uh, that's, that's a great question. And I was talking to somebody um, recently about like how you might do that. If, if there's a record in the aerial file about which camera they use, typically there might be. Um, but it's... Uh, Again, I haven't gotten that far into it, but that is one of the things that we would like to put up there is to have the camera calibrations available. So if you, you know, if you download a set of images, then you can take the calibration data and, and uh, plug that into to get your, uh, you know, to get your GIS products going. Well, I mean, it would depend on um, the format that you you can use uh, for the raster um, and. And if you can have metadata along with it, then you right. can. Um, I don't know what you can allow people to download things as, um, but there's certain raster files that do have metadata files with them. Yeah, now is that something that maybe is uh, happens typically? Would you put that camera calibration data in the in the metadata of a, a file? I. I, I believe that you can do that. I, um, I, for me, it's something that I see in drone imagery. I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in on that or if Judy, you know exactly what they do with like uh, JPEG 2000 or SID. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure where the camera calibration data generally lives. Um, so, but it's a great, I mean, it's definitely something to think about because something that people want to get if they want to do photogrammetry on the old photography to compare the present to the past. I know that uh, years and years and years ago, admitting how old I am, uh, I did a project where for a FERC relicensing where we needed bathymetry for Flagstaff Lake and none existed, but uh, Sewell flew Flagstaff as it flooded 
Um, and so we knew what the water height was each day. And so we could digitize the boundary of the lake. And so by that, get bathymetry from those photos. And they're super interesting. Oh. Of course, there's a whole town underwater there. <laughs> right, yeah. I... See flooding over time. And I, I do have those, I, I do have some of the Flagstaff imagery there. I did, I haven't looked at it too much, but there was a folder that came over from school that was digitized. It says Flagstaff Lake on it. <laughs> yeah. um, and Josh Roy asked a similar question. He says, are you able to make measurements of coastal change over time? Like the widening of salt marsh creeks or would you more likely just provide the imagery and let other people quantify that kind of information? Right, as a you know, as our uh, as the archive or the library, our job is just to sort of like provide you with the information and any post processing or anything you want to do with that is, is pretty much incumbent on the user. Um, but uh, you know, I I do the, on request. I might do a little contrast or you know, sharpen up an image. But uh, like you said, I'm not uh, not well versed on the actual photogrammetric measurements in. GIS at this point. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Someone offered to uh, kind of like walk me through a little bit uh, on it. Um, so kind of looking forward to that. I suppose I could take a class too. I know there's, I know Esri has some nice tutorials online too. Just uh, I haven't gotten around to that. <laughs> I'm getting there. Well, it's very new. We're all, it's all new to me, but I'm, yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> kind of a steep learning curve. I think it's fascinating though. It's, it's just an incredible. Uh, industry and technologies out there that I actually knew nothing about until about two years ago. <laughs> so. so, but yeah, we, uh, the, I know I've been, we've had, had a couple of quests about coastal erosion, but yeah, that would be something you would have to, um, it's my understanding, you know, take, take a set of images and make a mosaic and do the uh, the bundle adjustments, the triangulation bundle adjustments uh, on it, so that you could actually do precise measurements uh, between, right. say, you know, 1950 or um, forward. That's why we we really want to emphasize getting the the earliest rolls digitized, not only to preserve them, but as something like that, where you would you would definitely be able to see probably the most change if you the farthest back you could go. And, um, you know, there's a lot of interest in the earliest coastal rolls. So, Great. so um, Paul, I'm going to uh, allow uh, Claire Kodowski, uh to um, comment. Um, she's a photogrammetrist with a lot of expertise in imagery. That would be that would be great. <laughs> Claire, are you there? Hi, this is Claire. Hi, Claire. This is a wonderful presentation. I'm so excited to oh, make thank your. You acquaintance. So my name's Claire Kudrowski and I'm a photogrammetrist. So oh great. Um a last name nice and long and photogrammetrist nice and long. Uh, you have a wonderful resource uh historical narrative of what's been going on in Maine. Uh you know uh <clears throat> and so what you you know one of the I'm I'm one of the people that asked a number of questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So it sounds like you ha you have all the components that would be needed to provide an error triangulation. So all of your images are not yet geo-referenced. Um, That's correct. They're, they're very valuable though, okay? But you specifically have to either lay them out. I mean, that's where those contact prints are so wonderful because it allows you to arrange them and see the overlap and figure out, well, you know, is this my area of interest? Um, the camera calibration report provides sort of a coordinate system uh, that we need to provide to stitch all those images together and, and error triangulate it. And that just means that we're, we're stitching them like you laid them out. That's what we're doing mathematically once they're scanned. So if somebody, wants to take measurements and compare to say present day, they would want to get that imagery uh, error triangulated or AT. Um, but they, you know, if, if money or funds are limited, they could always just 
scale, you know, kind of rubber sheet it to, you know, using ESRI tools. Yeah. And, and my, that might be good enough. It depends on what your project is and how large, uh, you know, how large an error you're allowed, you're allowing to do um, in terms right. of measurements. Um, so, you know, as a photogrammetrist, we always want it. <laughs> um, and I'd be happy. I'd love to come take a look sometime. Uh, oh, you're more than welcome. I guess. Yeah, and uh, and talk techie stuff. And one of my other questions is if you're accepting other other catalogs of uh, other data sets sources. Oh, are we like uh, uh, for example, what kind of other data sets? Or um, well, I had a firm. Uh, I know there's a couple of other firms within the state of Maine that provide, you know, photogrammetric services. And, um, you know, where does that older data live? It's valuable. Uh, it's of interest probably to the mappers and the GIS professionals, but it's not, you know. Uh, I think I think that would be good. I I am a I'm kind of low on the food chain. The library. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I can ask that question later. <laughs> but, but I mean, in terms of in terms of actually saying yes, we can receive that. Um, that's not I mean. I personally think that would be great. And if, uh, if you um, can send that send information to me, then I'll I'll get it get it over to our uh, department chair. He's sure, sure. normally the ones that makes the decision about what we receive. But I would love to have stuff like that myself. I think the more right. the better. Um, as we're putting this stuff together. Um, you said it needs all this stuff needs to be preserved somehow, and it's got to be, uh, you know, it's got to be pre preserved in digital format on the cloud at this point. That's our strategy, and make it a bit, as much of it as available to everybody. Excellent. That's it's a wonderful historical narrative in time. So, thank you the, for a really interesting presentation. Oh no, thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. And then I, I wanted to say that is something that we are talking about with uh, when we're asking for bids just to get even, you know, it, it's probably be expensive to get the full aerial triangulation service, but we would like to get um, just basic georeferencing on each one of the photos. Um, and, and that would go a long way in terms of just searchability and things like that. Well, you know, Paul, that might be a good project for a college student or some sort of uh high yeah. visual uh, imagery studies at the university um you should talk to some of the faculty there see whether or not yeah that that is good i i've a couple different yeah i've been trying to get students involved a little bit actually i was trying to get the engineering students to build me a an aerial film scanner sort of like automate a role huh. <laughs> that kind of fell through with the pandemic too but yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely that's a, that's a good thing. Like, I didn't. I sort of missed the. Uh, I think we had two professors, uh, uh, imagery, photogrammetry, remote sensing professors uh, back in the day. I first took my first GIS class in like 2006, and uh, right after that, the uh, the imagery professors left. So <laughs> yeah, we didn't have any uh, sort of like. Imagery classes available. I did take. I took Ray Hintz's photogrammetry class uh, yeah. last last year, and I learned a lot. But you know, that's kind of a whirlwind tour. So it wasn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would encourage you to reach out to the department again. I think that they 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 can benefit you, and they would benefit from this. Um, I was going to say, John Giles, you had a couple of comments. Would you uh, Would you like to comment verbally? I can unmute you. Sure. Go ahead. Hi, uh, great presentation. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, oh, thank you. I, I've been a longtime user of the Sewell Archive over the years, um, great. both uh, at, in, a photo, in the photogrammetric industry, um, but also at, at working in municipalities and as a surveyor. Um, definitely have used the uh, historical photos to do historical coastal mapping and stuff like that. Um, and I would say, you know, some some of the greatest value in terms of georeferencing it, just so you know, to make the collection more accessible, would be just, for instance, um, georeferencing the flight index maps, mm -hmm. um, so that so that people can begin getting a sense of where some of the exposures are. I, sounds like you know, maybe not all of them are available or or readily accessible, but that, that's one start. And then 
a lot of times when it comes to doing the projects and Claire can chime in or correct me, but um, from a project by project basis, just having the images scanned and the camera calibration reports available, that, that's really the starting point for someone then to, to take those images and, and, and create mapping from them in a, in a metrically correct way. Yes. So it, it wouldn't have to be all aerially triangulated to start with. It could, it could start by just preserving the images and the camera calibration reports that go along with it as, as sort of the starting point for anyone who wanted to take it from there. Um, because other because to do the aerial triangulation, ultimately you have to have ground control points, and that's a right. whole other process right. and, and degree of complication. I think um, I was reading a little bit. It seemed like um, ArcGIS now sort of has a way to um, I don't know sort of massage that or something without ground control points or something. I don't know. Yeah, and that, that, yes and no. I mean, lots of things are possible. You know, will it actually be tied to a, to known points on the ground, especially with historical right. yeah. imagery? It's, ha, ha, having, having tried to do mapping from, you know, 60s era photography and stuff, you have to go out and find points that are on the ground that you can find today that were there then. Right. I think uh, there are still some of the, I guess, the USGS and other, survey points, I guess, out there. Are. Yeah, but yeah, it's whether they're photo identifiable in the images. Um, right, that's right, yeah. Earth, Earth Explorer has a, a, a present model where you can download scan film and, and the camera calibration reports if you're looking for sort of a model. Oh, to, good, to, yes. To, to compare or emulate. Um, well, what was I that can again? get a hold of you offline and we, I can kind of walk you through some of that stuff. Yes, please, please uh, get a hold of me, contact me, That's like an email or something. I'm uh, very much yeah, interested. Your, um, Paul, did you put your email address up? Uh, uh, yeah, I, well, I did on the slides. Yeah, I'll, it's just Paul. It's just paul.smitherman at main.edu. And if, if anyone has any questions or suggestions or would like to also reach out to Paul, you can always email us at MeDoug as well, MeDoug board at Gmail. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I. I love talking to people about this stuff, but I'm sort of like, I haven't had too many people to talk to about it, actually. So it's just actually fun. Everybody, I meet people from Sewell, people call me, some, oh yeah, I used to work at Sewell, and um, you can talk to them for a little bit, but it's, you know. I, yeah. I, I worked there part-time at one point, too, so. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating story. Apparently, um, somebody's writing a, his, a history of Sewell at this point. Um, I'm not sure when it's going to come out, but I'd nice. also be very interested in reading that. <laughs> so I think Claire is ready to, did you want to add to what John was asking, Claire? No, no, he, he did a great job. I don't really have anything. I mean, it's a, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a large discipline and there's lots of different ways that you can go, but uh, it sounds like you have all the inputs and people have lots of options. So. And I used to work at school too back in the nineties. Oh, okay, nice. so. <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge. It was a huge operation. It's just amazing to uh, yeah. go through some of the materials and different things that I found out. It's amazing. There's definitely a lot of alum of Sewell around, and uh, we're glad that there that many of them are still in the industry here in Maine. Um, Judy, did you have any other comments or questions that I may have missed? Well, I was just going to say, looking at the participant list, I think you've got the right audience here, and you'll be inundated now with people stopping by to uh, give you uh, thoughts, ideas, and appreciate the great collection that you have. And uh, so it's good to connect people. That's part of what you know we as the main GIS users group like to do. Yes. Uh, and I can see from the list of people watching this that a lot of people who know a lot about what about the stuff you have are on it. So hopefully they'll contact you and, uh, you know, maybe you guys can have a, your own little meeting about what to that do. Would, that all, would be great. You know, I, should actually become, <laughs> I should become a member, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will. We'd love to have you. Actually, I, I will uh, ask. I see Dave Edson commented and he certainly uh would have um yes yes uh 
if I can unmute you, Dave, I will try to do that. Hang on a second. Yeah, you should be unmuted, Dave. Are you there? Paul, oh, yes, and uh, yes, I am, and I appreciate the uh, the effort that you have committed to uh, trying to make broader use of this imagery. I think it's a one. I know it's a wonderful resource, and it was uh, it was collected. It was processed uh, with. Uh, the best standards available at the time. Obviously, technology changed and continues to change, but uh, this is a resource that one hopes can be used for any number of uh, good applications. And it's, it's just wonderful that the capability exists at the university to make this available. Best of luck. Yes, thanks, Dave. You're actually on my list of people that I'm supposed to talk to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or, or I talked to Earl Raymond last year a little bit. Yeah. Say. He was like, you should talk to Dave Edson. So, yeah. Uh, I just, I just, I yeah. Was, we're, uh, we're happily retired and, and uh, have plenty of time to talk. So. Oh, that'd be great. Yes. <laughs> well, be yes. Uh, looking forward to it, actually. Great. Great. Well, thanks, Dave. Um, and uh, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, you know, it was a great, uh, you know, talk and I just want to say to our audience you know obviously Paul's talk was a little was a little brief but we are here to, to share information and there's I'm really glad that everyone chimed in and we were able to get a conversation going so um, consider that anyone on this call could present on what you're working on even if it's not complete um, and it will be a great uh, presentation and educational um, so uh, I appreciate uh, Paul, you being open to kind of improvising, um, but I, I know that people really like this, uh, what you're doing. Um, and um, yeah, Judy, did you want to add anything? I just echo John's last comment there that, uh, and a great thanks to the James Sewell Company for donating yes. this to the public because it is a great resource for the state. And, um, you know, it's really appreciated that the, and that the university was willing to take it on. So. I'm um, really appreciative of all the efforts that everyone made for that to happen. That's great. And thanks very much for having me. And I, I think, like I said, this is a, just the start of a, a much wider discussion that needs to happen on this stuff. Excellent. Great. Well, we will uh, we'll post this on our YouTube channel. Um, and again, thank you, everybody, uh, so much. Um, and um, uh, thank you, Paul and Judy. And everyone, enjoy your summer. And Maybe we'll be seeing you in person in the fall, um, but definitely if not, we'll be back with our brown bag uh, lunch and learns. Uh, so um, stay safe uh, and have a, a great summer. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Okay, bye-bye.